Our system of writing numbers is base 10 and positional. It's base 10 because each named unit, 1, 10, 100, 1000, and so on, is 10 times the magnitude of the preceding, and positional because the value of a symbol is based on its location within the written number. A workable positional system requires a symbol indicating the absence of an order of magnitude. In other words, a symbol for zero. One problem with tracing the early history of our system is that there are two different zero symbols. The first is used to indicate the absence of a quantity. And in the 2nd century AD, Ptolemy used an open circle to indicate such absences. But Ptolemy's number system was not positional. Now, our modern zero symbol first appeared in the work of Pangala in 150 BC. But again, in Pangala's work, the symbol, which he refers to as sunya, or void, is used as a marker without any numerical value. So when did our positional zero emerge? To answer that, it helps to consider a key problem before the invention of printing. How do you communicate an idea? One solution, poetry. So I'm going to mangle the Sanskrit pronunciation here, so bear with me. The Yavanajataka of Svujitvaja used an object numeral system to express numbers. In this system, a numerical amount was represented by an object that evoked the amount. For example, moon could mean one, since there's one moon. Seriously? You're going to make me say it, aren't you? That's no moon. Well, okay, earth also could mean one. Eyes could mean two, since most people have two eyes. Limb could mean six, since most, um, since the six parts of the Vedas are referred to as limbs. Teeth could mean 32, and so on. The value of a symbol depended on its place in the phrase, with each position having ten times the value of the preceding. For example, we might determine the value moon, eye, limb, moon. So we should read this as follows. Moon is 1. I is 2, but since it's in the second place, its value is 10 times as great, so it represents 20. Limb, remember, there are six limbs of the Vedas. That's 6, but since it's a third word, it's 10 times 10, 100 times as great, 600. And again, moon is 1, but as the fourth word, it's 1,000 times as great and represents 1,000. Now, it's important to note that the smallest order of magnitude is first, and so more familiarly, we'd read this number as 1,621. One intriguing feature is Svujitvaja's use of words like void, or sky, or dot, and he's using these to correspond to the absence of an order of magnitude. Void, nothing, sky, wide open, nothing. For example, moon, sky, eyes would be one, nothing, 200, or what we might call 201. We see a variation of this approach in the work of Aryabhata, who replaced the object names with arbitrary consonants in his Aryabhatiya. Vowels could be interpolated to allow the word to be read. For example, the digits 63335775 could be associated with certain consonants, and to make the word readable, we'll interpolate some vowels, so we get the word kayagiyinusukhler, and this would be, or as we would read it, And the clearest early evidence of a positional base 10 system comes from Brahmagupta, who lived about 100 years after Aryabhata. Translating from the Sanskrit, Brahmagupta refers to the number four zeros, 32, 4, which would be 0, 0, 0, 0, 32, 4, which we would read as our modern number. Note that the 32 here is actually 32 ten thousands, so 4 ends up at the millions place.